So uh, you, uh, your privacy case has moved to a point of resolution, that is a proposed resolution anyway. Yeah, so. hopefully. So we um, went on for about a year, more than a year, with the access to information request to get the details of the identity of the vendors, the purchase price, and any side deals that were done in the city acquiring the land for light rail stage one. And this was delayed and delayed for over a year. And finally, uh, the privacy commissioner said that if I was okay with the city producing a report to committee or council in September, that uh, I could, she would ask that I withdraw my request. And if the report did not include all the necessary information, then I, she would let me reactivate it uh, after that point. So I agreed to that. And so you expect that report to committee and council when? Sometime in September. So uh, it will be on sometime in September. I'll reactivate the request. I expect they're going to be up to it. Is it, I, I assume it was effective? I assume. Is the chair going to allow that report to <laughs> I hope so. Um, I think it goes to. I think it would go to federal most properly, and then we'll see if it includes a all the properties, or b all of the details. Because you can't tell just by purchase price what the real change of goods was. Because you know they could sell you the land for a dollar, but you have to build them another building for six million. You know, so the, the single purchase price doesn't tell you everything. In most expropriations, there are so many additional details that often equips the purchase price. So for those who aren't all up on the municipal speak, what are you concerned about? Well, I'm concerned to know who sold the land. Now, I'm guessing half of it is government, so I'm not that concerned about that. But who sold the land, what their position was in relation to the light rail deal, uh, what the purchase price was, and how it was arrived at, and uh, what side deals were done. So, and whether all were treated equal, that's also important. Because we have a function to do oversight, which um, we're now seeing the importance of in the SNC contract. And we have that function to do here as well. And next, I think we'll deal with light rail stage two land purchases, which we also don't have the information on. And this is what's curious, because you talk to any lawyer out there, they expect that city council has been given the details of the land purchases. That's just expected. And you shouldn't have to go to Infipa, the Freedom of Information, to get those details. Well, especially as the boss, one of the 24 bosses here at right, City Hall. Right, we should all have it. Uh, if you're saying it shouldn't be public, then fine, we go in camera and deal with it. That's what in camera is for. Uh, but somebody has got to do the oversight. Is this just an issue of transparency, or do you think that there's something iffy going on with some of the purchases? Well, there are so many rumors out there, but I think the fact that information is withheld causes rumors. So I'm not going to believe any of them, but I want to see. Uh, so that's that's what's important. Is there a specific part of land that you're talking about, or is it all the land that had all the land purchased? that was all the land that was purchased purchased from private sector owners? Uh, I think it's important that we get a hold of. What are your thoughts, uh, Councillor, over the past two or three weeks with the revelation about the Stage 2 scoring? I suppose we'll start there. I don't think we had a chance to ask you about that yet. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there were a few of us who had concerns about that during the SNC debate, uh, if you want to call it that. We voted <laughs> against it. And because uh, we tell everyone else you have to meet minimum requirements to be a bidder. Uh, so why the exception here? And then if there's an exception and they, and they win the bid, I also know that so-called lowest bid on a contract like this, there is no bottom line price. There are so many elements that go into interpreting who, who's got the lowest bid. And so we'd be better able to tell if we had that kind of information up front. So, uh, and what about the, 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 a lot of people have been talking about the, the city's legal expert uh, is also in an SNC. Uh, law firm as well. Do you think there's been a conflict there, or does that raise any concerns for you? Well, it raised concerns for me back when we dealt with the contract. I asked the lawyer directly about it. Um, there were many denials at the time. We now know that they did represent both parties. Uh, that That's sort of the basis for saying there initially should be an inquiry to see if there's a conflict. Uh, but regardless whether there is or isn't one, there's a perception of one. And if you have a perception of a conflict, 
to being used in the case of justifying pushing someone through in the bidding process, it makes it all very murky and very difficult to deal with. So I'd just like to see it cleared up at this point. Do you think since there, I mean, the technical threshold wasn't met, uh, clearly they didn't follow the technical threshold, do you think it just would have been easier just to boost it by three points, just to keep everybody boost, happy? Boost. Boost it from 67 to 70, even if they... Well, whoever was doing the scoring, I guess, wasn't going to do that, so... <laughs> so, no. No, there are other, there could have been other people bidding, or other firms bidding, and you have to have a minimum... Uh, threshold, you have to meet a minimum threshold to be a bidder. That's the way we do things here. And so if you're going to make an exception, then I think that's a case where you go in behind in camera at least and talk to counsel and explain your case for making an exception. You don't just make an exception. So I'd like to see that happen in the future for sure. Councilor, do you have any thought? We're, we're in a period right now where we're trying to figure out if stage one is going to be done this mm -hmm. Friday. It seems to be like a uh, of radio silence by the city. Uh, the council been kept apprised of what's going on right now, and are you very concerned no, about no, no, no we haven't, but there is a light rail office that you can talk to that probably knows the answer, whether they're telling you or not. And uh, I hope that it's ready to hand over on Friday, because um, this is well, well over a year late. Um, so what can I say? I hope, I hope it's ready Friday. And, uh, and we'll start looking at phase two. Have you heard about any issues, like timing issues, and perhaps I heard somewhere that uh, the power went out uh, on one of the lines? Yeah, I heard that too, but I didn't get a report on that, so I don't know. Um, but hopefully the, the contract, uh, or sort of the um, handover will happen Friday, then hopefully some point in September we'll have uh, some operation happening. But uh, I guess we'll see. But I don't want it. If, if part of the problem was, say, a derailment or something, you don't want them to start putting people in the train if it's derailing. So I want that fixed. Going back to your uh, original the reason we're here, do um, you think there's stuff going on behind closed doors that maybe you're not? Well, everything went on behind closed doors. Uh, and it should have been shared with council, at least by this point. What I, have, I can see no reason for keeping anything from anybody, especially not council, when it's almost ready to open, every piece of land has been built on, there is nothing, there's no question out there as to who owns the land. So you would think that by now it would be going uh, to council. What role do you think the mayor plays in, in any of this? Well, the mayor walked on the request in the, initially to keep it all secret. So, and gave the justification for it which kind of it's based on a false interpretation of how uh, expropriation works. Because it doesn't go by comparison of land prices, it goes by highest and best use. So, uh, and beyond that, who knows? Like, with no flow of information to council on land purchases, we can't really speculate as to what's keeping it. Do you think Ottawa's municipal guard has become less transparent over the, in recent years? It depends what you're looking at. If you want to find out how much I spent on lunch, you'll get that in 10 days. Easy, no problem. But if you want to find out how much we spent to acquire land, each of the pieces of land for light rail phase one, you're not getting that. So on the bigger, more significant issues, it's less transparent. And on the less important but glittery issues, it's more transparent. This is just sort of, what, what does this say about council when one of the councillors has to submit his own MFIPA request to find information on a pretty major project in the city? Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. I think uh, if you talk to lawyers out there, they're going to tell you there is no reason that this information can't be given to council, at least in camera, if not in public. Uh, the deals have been done, uh, and there's no more negotiation left, and there wasn't, you know, six months ago. Uh, and we're building on the land, so they must be pretty sure we're going to have the land. So, yeah, in the interest of transparency, members of council should be given this information so they conduct the oversight that they were elected to do. Beyond the, the issue of transparency, do you suspect that there is something else going on here? Do you, do you suspect that if the public does see how much has been put out, spent by the city on taking this over this property, that there's going to be outrage? Well, there may be in some cases, 
some uh, discomfort or some anger about what was spent to acquire it. I don't know because we don't know the answer. But if there is, then that's what we get to deal with because that's what we're here for. We're supposed to be accountable for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.